love you too. Hey, listen, I'm going to show you guys on this video how to program your microscore output to create a shift light. So I think it's something that I need to definitely tell myself when the RPMs are up and a visual and I wanted a shift light. So I figured why not try to do it with the microscore. It's got programmable outputs on it. And on top of that, if you have an 86 like mine, you've got a shift light built in to your warning LEDs. This is a spare panel I've got here. And I just want to show you real quick that the second from the bottom light is an actual shift light. It says the word shift. Um, I think it's there on all of them because mine and the spare one both have it. And I believe it's for the SBOs, but not wired, you know, for a GT with a five liter. I could be wrong. But nonetheless, I thought it'd be really cool to see if I can use this stock shift light and wire it as a shift light. So I've got it kind of all rigged up right now just to see how it works, and it does. So let me go ahead and show you how to do this on the Microsoft controller and also on Tuner Studio. Okay, let me show you what I got going on here, guys. So please pardon the mess I've got in my car right now because I'm just really just testing things out. So on the micro squirt, you have a, a yellow and white wire. Now there's also other outputs on this unit here. A lot of them, at least for the micro squirt, at least for our Fox bodies are already being used. And the one option that comes with a kit is a yellow and white wire for the fan output. Now you can use this for a fan obviously, um, but what this does is trigger a 12 volt power source and it's determined by the software when it clicks on. And I'll show you guys that in a second. But mine already has a, a manual fan controller that's hooked up there and came with my, my flex like fan. So I'm just going to go ahead and use it uh, because it's functioning. Why wire this? It works. It kicks on at 180. It kicks off. It does exactly what I want it to do. So just to kind of show you guys what we got set up here. Basically, this is a ground switch wire. So the yellow wire coming out of here, yellow and white, it actually says labeled fan on it. So you want to make sure you have a ground hookup switch to it. I've got this right now hooked up to this LED light and I've got a power source hooked up to um, key on power. So what happens is I turn the key on, um, this is not going to get energized until we program it the software. So let's go over here to the software and show you guys how to figure that our, how to hook this up. Okay, so we got the wire hooked up to the negative terminal side on my little LED light here. Um, it's just in a normal, I guess, uh, just a cheapo little socket. But the negative terminal is hooked up to the fan output, yellow and white wire coming out of the microscore harness. And the positive wire, the red one here, is hooked up to just a, a key on source onto the car. So now we have to tell the, the unit, tell the computer when and how we want to turn this thing on. So what we're going to do is go over to our tuner studio. Okay, over here in Tuner Studio, you go up to your Boost Advanced and go down to Programmable On and Off Outputs. Now, the stock tune, your A LED is actually your fan control. That is your yellow and white wire hooked up to the fan. Um, the other ones I've noticed, they're even though they're they're output ports here, they're actually wired. And the circuitry is already wired to do other things within the stock Fox Body Mustang already. So, um, unfortunately, I've, I tried to use some of these and it didn't work because it, it interfered with some of the other conditions or the other um, components within the, within the computer. So, ALED, I know, was already hooked up um, because this was set to coolant. So, by default, at least the way the tune came, this was set to coolant and is greater than 250. Of course, this is a, a bogus setting. You basically want to say anything over like 180. Um, the hysteresis is basically your your 10 degree threshold, so it's going to hit in this case 250, which is ridiculous. But let's just say um, 180 is a more normal figure, and then after it drops 10 degrees lower, it'll turn off. So if at 170, it would turn off. Um, so that is how it was set by default. But you could change this to come on in any kind of condition. So it's enabled by default. But what I wanted to do in this case, since we're making a shift light. All we have to do is change the output channel from the active condition to RPM. And we want to say RPM is greater than 1800. Let's change this just to test it to 2500. And the hysteresis is set to 100, so it won't shut off till it hits 100 under it. That way it's not flickering on and off when it's right on the threshold. So that to me is perfect. We'll go ahead and burn that in. Now, just as a quick test, I'm going to turn the engine over. And when I rev it, 
past 2500, the light should turn on. So that's working. That's pretty rad. Um, I'm going to go ahead and now just clean all this up and wire it and try to get it wired up into my shift light, which is right here. So that'll function just as the way you saw it, except the shift light right here will turn on. Okay, so I'm trying different socket options here. Um, this is what, well, this is just your standard bulb socket for your instrument cluster hoops. And this is an extra one I had laying around, but it's just a little bit too big. This would work if it wasn't all mangled up and a little bit smaller. So I'm gonna go to the auto parts store and see if I can't find a correct socket twist type with wires on it that will go into this section here so that I can uh, put my LED bulb in it. Now I know that the bulb I was testing is a different bulb, um, but I've got extra ones just like this and I'm already lighting my instrument cluster up with. So we'll be able to get a normal socket, hopefully with wires on it, that'll fit in here nice and tight and then get a, one of my extra bulbs in it and be good to go, hopefully. Alright, this is the one I've got. I know that it's going to be a little bit too big, um, but it is a Chrysler, I don't know, socket here. But what I think I can do, what we're gonna try to do here, is just use the locking ears on each side here and then cut these off. So I'm gonna cut the rubber down. This is four bucks, so I don't really care. Um, I'll try to make this work. We'll cut it down, Let's see what happens. Yeah. Okay, man, so it is wired up in the shift light and um, it should work, so. Everything is tucked back up into the uh, into the kickboard where it belongs. So we're gonna start it up, and I still have the shift point set to 2500. So let's give it a shot. We'll take the car out and uh, if not outside, we'll see how the shift light works. Okay, seriously, that was probably one of the most fun I've had in the car since I've got the turbo kit on it. Haven't talked to you guys about it. There's lots of updates on it. The car ran absolutely great last night. Um, and man, the shift light works pretty good. It's kind of in the way of the steering wheel, so I don't know how well it's going to work out. And I want to drive in the daytime to see if it's even noticeable. i got a feeling it's going to be kind of in a bad spot. But it is pretty cool that it works. Um, it's shifting, or it's, it comes on right when I set it to at 5800. And it's a good indicator for me to shift. But the car was crazy fast right now. Uh, or yet last time when I drove it, the air was really cool, um, and the car was able to go up to I think 8.6 pounds of boost. I did up the boost on it to eight, 
um, and is now going off the boost controller. And it was having tons of traction problems last night, just kind of sliding all the road. But um, it feels very, very strong at eight pounds, and it's crazy the difference between just six and eight. The shift light um, was super bright at night. I mean, even if you're not looking at it, it lights up. Obviously, you know, you know when it's on, right? Um, so that works cool. I'm a little concerned about the daytime. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to notice it. It, it is a bright LED, so you'll see it. The problem is the steering wheel is kind of right in the way, and depending on where your hands are, you may not see the light. It's still in a cool spot. If I want to move it later, I can. Um, I can always, you know, put it into the dash in between maybe um, or right below the turn signal and actually mount an LED light there if we wanted to. Um, it's not mounted the best way. Either the LED that I've got on there, the, the bulb, the socket that I ended up using, it had to shave it down a little bit. It, it's not it, it's not perfectly tight in there. It's not going anywhere, but it's not it's not professional by any means. But it works. Um, it's really cool what you can do with the micro squirts or the micro squirts. I do want to mention that the micro squirt um, is limited on the outputs. If you guys get the mega squirt, which is the bigger daddy version of it, not the the smaller one that the micro squirt is, like what you get from DIY. Um, REFI source, um, it has more outputs and depending on what kind of board you get um, versus the Microsoft One, the Two, or the Three and the Extras um, does dictate on kind of on how many outputs you have. Not a huge, I don't know a whole ton about it, but I do know that this one is because it's such a smaller board, it is very limited on the outputs. You've only got maybe one or two, some other ones. Um, one thing you can do when I've read is it does have CAN bus out and you can actually hook up some wires, go to a CAN bus module or hook it up, hook up the CAN bus wires so that you can put expansion modules on it or transmission control and other type of modules on it. So it's expandable from what I understand. Um, nonetheless, I don't need to do a lot of stuff with the outputs on it. I do love the fact that I have a single output, I can do what I want with it. Man, you can you can trigger that light to do anything, guys. I mean, really think about it. Um, if you want to make sure your airflow ratio, you know, under boost gets to a certain a certain range, you want that to trigger, or you want it to come on, you know, come on with um, hot coolant temperatures. You can make any kind of warning light, pretty much from any parameter that the micro squirt is already recording. So that is what is so freaking cool about having a modern computer in an old car like this. It just opens up the potentials and really opens up the imagination. So I'm gonna have some tuning videos coming up too. We're gonna do a little bit of, uh, I'm just gonna kinda show you. I haven't, I have not left this tune alone. Justin set me up with a great bass tune. So thank you, Justin, again. Um, but I have tinkered with it quite a bit and I've, I've changed a lot of parameters on it. I kinda wanna go over to you guys what he set up and then what I've changed and some of the things I've used like VE Analyze um, with the data logs to kind of get an idea of areas in the map that may be rich or lean to try to match up a little better so the O2 sensor, the wideband, is not doing as much work and the airfield targets are on spot with or without a wideband. That's the key, right? So we want to just kind of dial in the tune a little bit more. We also probably will be setting up some dyno time to get a reading on the car and get a good dyno output on it and also get someone who is more familiar with the stuff than I am because I'm still learning. Uh, get them some seat time and let them dyno it and you know get some professional tune on it but yeah let me show you what's coming up in the next video so this is as you know a electric dump so this is cool this is electric cutout and um, it is going to dump right here so this is a this is actually a QTP part and I ordered this from Amazon to fit this QTP electric dump that was given to me for free that's right, I have a buddy who had one, didn't want any more, gave it to me. I've hooked it up. It works. It's just uh, polarity, you know, positive negative and the reverse polarity um, sends the motor the opposite direction. And I have went and ordered a switch for this, but I will get into the details of this later. And this and installing it in the next video. So we'll put electric dumps on it, which is kind of cool because I don't like crawling under it. What else, man? Oh, I fixed the... Uh, Fix the oil leak. So if you guys remember on the previous videos, I may have mentioned or may not have, but um, I had a pretty significant blow by because of this gasket seal around the fueler neck, uh, the filler neck, oil filler. So this was leaking pretty bad, and because it was leaking so bad, I was really concerned about it. Every time I'd run the car, I'd open the hood and wipe off all the oil because it was getting pushed out of here. And um, obviously you don't want the car to catch fire. <laughs> so Anyways, I just went out and got a new seal. This is a standard, I think, Mr. Gasket or something, uh, valve cover gasket. I mean, that's really all it is. It's a valve cover grommet, and it's meant for valve covers, and it's the same size as this. I took it up to O'Reilly's, 
and it ended up fitting perfect. It's super tight now. It doesn't wobble, and I can't even can't even spin it. And so it's it's really in there good. But it does no no longer leaks now, so that's cool. Um, what else we got going on here, guys? I oh yeah. AC line. I cleaned it up and then I decided to go ahead and use it. Uh, we've made this work. I've put a little bit of extra bend in it right there. Bent it out a little bit and um, I've got a seal kit. We got new O-rings on it and I'm going to put um, double she, um, heat shield on it. So this is just the outer layer but I've got an inner you know, a layer we're going to put on because basically I've determined that if you bend it correctly and bend this out towards the firewall or towards the fender here um, it can snake underneath the turbo and will fit. It's just going to be awfully tight right next to our downpipe, but that's why I'm going to wrap it. So basically I'm one pipe away from getting my AC running again. So I'm going to be doing this weekend, put the pipe back on, get the heat shield put on it. So I've gotten this DI wrap and we'll put over the, uh, the AC line. We'll take it over to Sean's shop and uh, run vacuum in it and refill the system and hope that it cools. So we'll have AC again because summer is here and it's getting nice and warm. So, man, that's it. It's a small update, just a small little thing. I want to say hi to everybody. It's a beautiful day out here. And, uh, man, keep working on those Fox body guys. Keep at it. Um, if you're wondering if the On3 kit is worth it, believe me, yes, it is. This car is super strong. And knock on wood, we haven't had it that long, but so far, zero issues. Um, and we'll get probably more detail on that stuff next time, too. Okay, guys, that's really it. That's going to wrap it up. Nice short video. Um, make sure to subscribe. we got all kinds of more stuff coming. We've got more projects. We'll be doing the dumps on next. We'll be doing the AC, getting it fixed up, and then we'll be taking it on more trips this summer and having fun with the car and uh, hopefully getting into the dyno as well to see how much power this thing's putting down to the ground uh, with, with, with the turbo kit. So, hey, make sure to subscribe. Make sure to follow me on Instagram just because I do post stuff before you see it here. If you're that interested in my project back here, then you can see it before it comes to you guys on YouTube. So, man, thanks for watching. We'll see y'all next time. Take care.